sound. All right, I'm gonna share this on mine. We love you guys. Okay. Click share right now just because you know it's about to be on. We're talking relationships. Why get married in a day and age where people aren't getting married, when there's so many freaking options, when you're like, why should I get married? Marriage is an institution that I don't necessarily believe in. Why should I just buy into the institution? We get it. What up, Jess? Michael. Blum. Yeah, Michael said, yeah, why? Blum. What up? Oh, Athena, my cousin's on. Blum. Linda, hello, hello. Blum. Preston Smiles is on, even though he's right here. <laughs> okay, so we, we, oh, we can see comments on this. It's we so can. weird. In yeah. my group, I can't see comments. Yep. Okay. Um, so, hi guys, we're coming to you from Byron Bay. Rastafari! Exactly. Um, we are talking about, Vinette said, what are you doing? What are you doing? What am I? <laughs> he's doing that. Bloop. That's what he's doing. Rasta, <laughs> let's get it. <laughs> um, so, we are talking about relationships. We are talking about why get married in a day and age when people are getting married and you're like, why are you getting married? Yep. So many options. So. And this is a great question because Preston and I mm -hmm. are both people mm -hmm. that don't agree with the establishment. No, not in its fullness. Of stuff. <laughs> we are the type of people that are anti-establishment for the mm. most part. But yet we got married last year, July 2nd. We got married. We did. We and just, vows. just to be clear, when we say anti-establishment, we mean anti or um, not even anti. We just sidestep the pro-conscious social conditioning <laughs> that has us believing certain things about who we are and what we should be doing with our lives yes we like we are very much into critical thinking yes and doing critical. things thoughtfully yes. and intentionally Rasta. not just doing them because you're supposed to do them yep so um, um we see lots of people on here you uh -huh. guys are amazing um good. lots of familiar faces good to see you guys names um, been married 32 or 34 years that my wife Laura and I have been together. Damn, They're amazing! That's so you guys awesome. got married at two years old. Two years old. Let's get it. They walked down that aisle. And like, What's up? Okay, so my personal take on marriage and commitment. I'll Tell share, me. I'll share a little two cents. Share it, baby. Real quick. Oh. Um, I was someone that never thought that I needed to get married. I was someone that was like, I I was not the female that like had my wedding planned. Um, I was kind of cool if I never got married. I was kind of cool if I never had kids. Like I was just like, all good. Whatever's meant to happen will happen. I'm here. I'm on a mission. I love my life. Yep. That was pretty much me. Mm -hmm. Then I met this guy. And there was something really powerful that happened when we connected and started doing our thing. I did that. <laughs> And it was over. And it was over. And then soon I said I, yes. As soon as I did that, as soon as I did that dance, she couldn't. I she couldn't, couldn't help herself. I had you know to say yes. Yeah, uh, I say. <laughs> um, but my commitment has always been, and will always be, to the highest and fullest expression of my own love for the capacity of myself to experience, give, and receive love. And that, to me, is the utmost commitment to myself to literally be here on this planet to dive as deep as far as I can go mm. into what it means to experience infinite love. Mm. Like true infinite love, not mm. just romantic love, but all love. Mm. Get it tatted. And get it tatted. Oh, I did. Get it tatted. I got that tatted Let's because go. that's how much it means to me. Me too, but you can't see it because I'm chocolate. Because <laughs> he's, he's, you. I'm chocolate. But it's there. It's there. It's there. <laughs> and, and it's funny because when we met, he had the same core value. He had the same commitment to himself. So actually in our vows, that was a part of our vows, was actually we were committing to ourselves mm. to be in the game, to be the fullest expressions of what infinite love means. Indeed. Agape love. Let's that. get it. So for me, you know, especially as men in the Western world, we are not brought up to fantasize about our wedding day and what dress. Even though he fantasized about me. I did. And what dress we're gonna wear and like, you yes. know, who's going to be there and all of these things, right? So this yes. is not something that has, has been spoon fed to men in the Western world. So in fact, most men in the Western world do their damn near best to avoid getting married, um, which is interesting, <laughs> True um, story. which is also some social conditioning and programming. And so for me, um, marriage is an opportunity. 
marriage is a ritual. Marriage is a unfolding, right? So when we say marriage, we all have all these ideas about what it is, right? We have all these ideas about what it is when in fact, marriage is whatever you say it is that. in that current moment, right? Or whatever commitment you made with your partner or partners if you're into polyamory. <laughs> Which we're not, but it's cool if you are. Do your thing. No judgment. Do your thug fizzle. So for <laughs> us, for me, in this process, you know, the moment I met Alexi, one of the first things that popped off in my head was that is my wife. And yeah, she's cool. And, and she's sexy. And cool. And cool. She <laughs> <laughs> That was weird. That was like a weird. You, you just like <laughs> tried to hurt me. We're going to call it domestic violence over here. Um, so for me, the moment I met her, it was clear that this was my wife. Now, how we proceeded to do that ceremony. Huh? You didn't tell me I heard I didn't see. I got some shit in my tooth right now, and none of y'all told me. I didn't even not see. one I didn't of even you guys. Think they saw it. Not one That's of you guys told me that I have a green thing, and my this is marriage right here. You see, you want to know what marriage is? You got some green shit in your tooth. That's marriage. And when you get it out, because you love that person. And your wife doesn't tell you that I you've just been talking it. to the camera. I'm acting all serious and shit. So listen, let me tell you what marriage is. And I got just <laughs> I a, got some green a, a booger all just sitting there on my tooth right now. I mean, can we just get real right now? Um, so point being is that the moment I met her, it was done for me. And, um, you know, however your relationship, because every relationship is a snowflake. This is the thing we all get to understand. There is no uniformed way in which one should be married. Right? I, we know people, we know couples who um, have sex with other people. Mm -hmm. And that's how their marriage works. And it works. And it them. works for them. We know couples who, uh, you know, get off on drama, right? And so there's always something and it works for them. Everybody's, uh, you know, partnership. These are we're two snowflakes, mm -hmm. right? They're going to look different for everybody else. And so the quote unquote institution of marriage as it has been handed to us, no, we don't align with that. But the, the, the commitment to an unfolding that we can place a word on called marriage, mm -hmm. we can call it smarriage. We can okay. call it carriage. We can call it Buggers. But <laughs> when it's all said and done, it's, it's about a commitment. And that commitment is to our highest. You see this? This is marriage as well. Every, every night that I sleep, I wake, basically wake up with her hair. Stuck and in his beard. Just like stuck on me. <laughs> it happens. It happens quite a bit. Especially marriage, if I haven't washed my hair in 10 days. Yes. Which is like all the time. Marriage is sacred. And so is all of life. Mm. Right? And so we can treat a girlfriend boyfriend relationship just how we treat a marriage yeah you know because and that's the thing I think people for us marriage wasn't about some piece of paper and the rings and all of that it was more about making a declaration of our love to our friends and family and making that commitment to ourselves first and we are committed to expanding and experiencing the utmost love in yes. our lives and then doing it together because we also recognize that, yes, we have aligned values, but yeah. we're two very different people. Yes. And the, the person that we attracted in each other also happens to be the person that calls us forward mm -hmm. in the biggest way possible, both personally, spiritually, and in our business. So yes. for us, it was like this full spectrum mm -hmm. of, oh, with this person, yes. I'm going to get to experience my highest growth because they're the mirror for me mm -hmm. and vice versa. And for us, two people who are insanely committed to our highest growth, that's like a hell yeah. I want to do that for life. Like that, that to me feels like the biggest transformation, the biggest um, workshop we could ever take, the biggest seminar you could ever step into, the, the best personal development book you could ever read is in relationship. Yep. And it's so funny because we have a lot of uh, single clients and older single friends are like, oh, you know, I'm single, I got this shit figured out, mm. I am sorted. Got it, I am awesome. I am so awesome <laughs> because you don't have anybody there calling you on your shit. Reflecting and like this. Like, your yo, bullshit, like, yo, there you it think, is. You think? You think, that, you think you serious? You think you fine? Like, you got some green shit in your you teeth. You got some <laughs> green shit in your teeth. Um, but this is so true, like, it is so easy to be enlightened and to be peaceful and to be freaking on it 
when nobody's calling you on your shit yeah. and when nobody's actually truly seeing the deepest, most yes. intimate parts of yourself. Yes. When you are in a deep, intimate, committed relationship, all your shit comes up because you're pushed and pressed to the edge of the mask that you've been wearing. Yes. And let me add to that because a lot of people, a lot of people have stories about dating and relationships. And what they do is, is they um, project those stories onto the world and onto any guy or girl who comes into their space. And then they pour themselves into their career or um, you know, their dog or something else in an attempt to avoid truly seeing themselves, mm. right? Because we need each other. We are social beings. This is how we, we, we live. We need each other. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, it is very easy to be, what is it called? Uh, a monk in... Uh, a monk in a monastery. Yes. Off in the mountains somewhere by yourself where the real world isn't triggering you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yes, you don't have to be a monk in a monastery, but if you are single and you keep throwing up deuces to every single person that you know, has some drama the minute there's drama in place, guess yeah. what? You're never actually forced to face off with your shit. Exactly. And it's so easy in the swipe world where it's like, oh, next date, next date, next date. Mm -hmm. This person is getting too close. My intimacy radar is going up. Indeed. And I don't like how it feels. It's scary. Yes. So with that said, you guys type in any questions or anything you have in there that you'd like to discuss as it pertains to relationship or anything else, but let's try to keep it in relationship. Um, yeah, let's, let's try, let's try and do that. One of the things that, that I want to sort of point out for myself um, is that I was amazing before I met Alexi. You were. I was pretty freaking awesome. You were, even though I didn't know you, but I'm assuming you were. I was definitely awesome. <laughs> But the moment that we got into a relationship and all my shit started to fly and flare up and all of her beautiful idiosyncrasies started to trigger me and trigger some of the things that I had never healed within myself, my career, my life, my love, my joy exponentially has grown. I was going like this. I met her and actually stepped in. I leaned in and my shit went like this straight rocket. So I want you guys to hear this because a lot of times we say, well, if, if I put you know, energy into a relationship, then my career is going to go down or I'm not going to have time for this, that, and the other. And I'm here to remind you and tell you that it'll probably do the exact opposite. Why? Because when you face off with your shit now, mm. it clears energetic space. And then you have all that real estate to plant seeds and build houses of joy and harmony and abundance. Rastafari, let's get it. Do you hear me? I hear you. Okay, that's my boo. My I boo hear hears me. Okay, so there we had a couple questions. One was, how do you know the, the difference between drama mm -hmm. and this just like, is somebody showing me the mirror? Yes. And that's a great question. Sometimes you don't know until you're in it. Yep. <laughs> like real talk. Get in the game. Get in the game. Number two, if you ask yourself the question, and this is an amazing question from the book, uh, Conversations with God, book one, what would love do now? Mm -hmm. And if you can answer that question with a lean in, go back, mm -hmm. keep talking, move forward. If you can answer that question with that and not just your pride, then it's most likely somebody holding the mirror up for you. Indeed. Your pride wants to run away. Your pride wants to go, I'm not too much drama. Your pride doesn't want to face off with what might be showing up. And here's the truth, guys. Even if you're in a relationship or dating and somebody's got a lot of drama, it's still a teacher for you. Mm -hmm. It is still a teacher for you. Why? Because you're attracting that drama. And we don't get what we want in life. We get what we are in life. So if you are attracting someone who's drama, 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 drama all day, you got to look at what part of yourself is attracting that to show up in your life. Rasta. Huge teacher there. Um, another question that I saw, I think it was from Michael. Let's do, oh. before that, Kira Knight said, I was in such an amazing place when I met my partner. We are getting married next year. I do find it hard sometimes though. It's, it's so hard to completely be the same person now they, Ooh, yeah there's a lot to this yeah how do you how keep, keep it real? real so Kira huge question thank you for sharing first and foremost second you are not the same person ever and your relationship is over if you're holding him to whatever you thought he used to be or should be 
-hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. And so the reason why I find that our relationship thrives is because I have a lot of space for Alexi to be whatever the fuck she's going to end up being, becoming, moving out of, whatever phases she needs to be in and out of. That's her. I'm curious about her. I don't know her. I know parts of her. He knows my history. I know her heart, but that, it, what that looks like and how that unfolds, I'm just along for the ride and vice versa. Yeah. So you keep it real by understanding, first of all, you have to shift your philosophy. This philosophy that is, we have to stay the same, we have to be how we were when we first met, yeah. you're fucked if you hold on to that. Yeah, and, and you don't want to stay in the same place. Like mm -mm. The best relationships are in a constant evolution because regardless of whether you acknowledge the evolution or not, you guys are both evolving. You're on your path and evolving, he's on his path and evolving. You guys are both evolving and doing your own thing and you're coming together to have this beautiful dance together, a partnership together where you're learning, you're growing, you're exploring, you're expanding. All of that is the purpose of relationship. Yes. So a lot of people get into a relationship and they're like, the purpose of relationship is for us to always be together forever and we never leave one another. That is so gross. <laughs> that. That, is, that like grosses me out. Yes. Um, but people literally are like, we never need to leave each other's side. We need to do everything together. We need to have all the same hobbies. If we don't, maybe we're not meant to be together. Maybe we're not this, maybe we're not that. And meanwhile, the thing that makes a relationship magic is space. Yes. And, and that's what a lot of people don't get. Like if you think about a flame, if a flame is, is you know, constantly being looked over, what's gonna happen? It's gonna do that. It's gonna push that flame out, <laughs> right? If a flame has space, if it has oxygen, it, it can grow. And that's where passion resides. If you can keep that passion alive in your relationship, then you keep coming back for more because it's filling your cup in so many ways. So keep evolving, keep stretching yourself, keep doing your own thing, and then share and bring those gifts that you learn on your own journeys back to the relationship. All right, Tony said, I love this talk. Do you find it's important to be in a relationship with someone who you want to emulate, values, goals, etc. Well, we kind of touched on this, but you Yeah, to slightly. We're gonna answer these quick so we can get through a lot of them. The answer is whatever that is for you, Tony. If that's what turns you on, yes. We have met many people and many couples that are exact opposites. And yes. that's also exciting and sexy and scary. And whatever works for you, whatever is calling you forward at this moment, we don't find it important to do anything other than truly follow that beautiful heart of yours. Yeah, and, and I'll just add to that, I do believe that shared values are key because if you have the same shared values, you can go a thousand different ways with those values, but you'll understand why each of you goes the way you go. And you won't try and make the other person wrong. I think that's what happens in a lot of relationships is people are like, oh, well, you're doing this thing. I wouldn't do that. And it's like, you're different people. And if you have kind of like similar core values, you guys can really rise together while doing different things. Yes. Yeah. And values change. They do. Uh, Renee from Estonia, what up? Uh, what about money and finances in a relationship towards your, towards your partner? Does your partner need to have a relationship towards your money or, you can't see the rest, but I'm assuming yeah. finances. What do you do? Well, here's what we do. Everyone does something different. Um, we have joint accounts that are for like our necessity things. And then we've got separate accounts because guess what one of our values are and it's our top one for both of us. <laughs> freedom. Um, so because we value freedom so much, uh, we decided to keep our finances both separate and joint and where they're joint, it's where our lives are touching together. So our expenses together, um, our play funds, we have play fund together as well. But we also have our own accounts that we can do whatever the fuck we want with. Yeah, what, however, whatever, however that works for you, you know? Um, and check in and see if it's a wound that's having that conversation or is it just uh, a deep value of, of yours and you find that it will serve you both in the long run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Amy said, I feel like my partner often limits my spiritual growth, but I also feel like this could be my perception and me just wanting to run and be free as he is an amazing person. Mm -hmm. Good catch. Um, <laughs> nobody limits your spiritual growth. No. The only thing in your way ever between you and money, between you and your spiritual growth, between you and your health, between you and powerful relationships is you. 
It's never anyone else. It's always you. It's always me. It's always him. It's always us. Hmm. We're the only thing that's ever in our own way of any single point of leveling up in our lives. So you get to look at what's the mechanism, what's the fear, what's the conversation, the story that's running that saying, well, he's not doing X, which means I can't do Do Y, which is basically your excuse, your reason for staying small. There's a bigger calling in you. You get to step forward in that and you get to like, really rise in that despite where he's at mm-hmm. that's the game for you mama exactly um, and what that may look like is you really taking a deeper look at some of your childhood conditioning mm. as far as what a man does in a relationship and what a woman does in a relationship because this even this idea of him limiting it probably means you have some type of victim consciousness in there or some type of traditional you know the man leads it's everything yeah, yeah. And, and so if you take a deeper look at that you may see that you you don't choose that anymore that's that's your parents or their great or their parents or TV or or whatever other conditioning you received at the time and and know that spirituality and this is like a little side note spirituality doesn't look like you putting your hands in a particular way and meditating you could be doing spirituality while you're taking a shit every morning totally. so the question shit, is like that's real spirituality <laughs> real spirituality is when you're taking a shit doing the dishes uh, you know <laughs> wiping your kids face off like yep. that's real spirituality if you can find your sense of oneness and your sense of source in everyday moments of life that's when you are literally in your essence it's not just when the conditions are right and everything's perfect and the sun's setting and the beach is coming up and I've got this amazing meditation in my ears it is literally in every day every moment every now practice yep and you talk about stonewalling and clinging being two sides to the same coin. Yeah, Yeah. so stonewalling is, um, it's a mechanism that's used pretty much when you're in victim mentality. And when you're in victim mentality, um, also kind of being in someone's space and being really clingy is saying, they make me feel better. So it's still victim mentality either way you look at it. So it is two sides of that same coin. Stonewalling is something that a lot of people do because they don't know how to effectively communicate Mm -hmm. their feelings, their needs, their commitments, their requests. And it's a power move. It's a power move. And for any of you guys who are like, what the fuck stonewalling? Stonewalling is when you're arguing and you're like this and you're up in each other's face. And then all of a sudden someone's like just completely ignoring you. And then the other person gets really mad at that point. They're like, what? You're just going to ignore me? Are you fucking serious right now? And then they'll like walk away, go do something, not answer your calls. That's stonewalling. And stonewalling is it's a war technique (laughs) between couples um, where it's literally a power move. It's going, I'm not getting what I want. You need to give me what I want, which is either an apology, tell me I'm right, tell me that you're wrong, whatever it is, and I'm a victim. Mm -hmm. And clinging is, I need you, I need you, I need you to make me better, you're the thing, you're the only thing that can fill in the blank. Still victim. Mm -hmm. I'm not responsible for my own happiness. I'm not responsible for my own joy. I'm not responsible for my own communication and an argument. It's all victim mentality. And victim mentality gets you nowhere, nowhere fast. Yes. um, And and I can just, as you're saying this, I can hear people going, but what if they're actually being an asshole and there's nothing I could do about it besides shut down, right? Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. None of everything we share, everything we say, take it with a grain of salt, try it on, see if it works for you. And our stuff that worked for us. And the only thing ever missing in any situation is what you're not giving. And so we can know that. And Alexi and I have been in arguments before where I know that logically. Mm-hmm. And my ego is like, fuck that and fuck this. And so at some point, one of us clicks back into gear, which usually happens because we take some deep breaths and shift our neurology and our physiology and either take some space or just go to hug each other because like both of us love. yes both of us uh have this sort of like safety net if you like if you if a you kill switch. yeah we have a kill switch if, if we're arguing and one of either one of us just goes and just does like this it's over it's not over but it's over in that way like the the war is over yes and we can go to war <laughs> like let's be clear type a type a hmm. Type A, type A. That's all I have to say. Mm-hmm. Type <laughs> A plus. Just type A. Yeah, I'm um, a number achievers though. Yeah. So, so before we go, David, we're going to get to your question. Before we do that, for any of you guys who are receiving value at this current moment, please 
click share on this share. and just like put out put put like a little message quickly and then jump back in and or at the end of this please share this message if it is resonating with you and uh, just striking the core because we find that there's a lot of noise in the world right now Especially and online. some of it is I mean everybody's doing the best they can but some of it feels a little misguided um, and and so you know ours can be considered misguided as well exactly depending on who you are but that's why I said if it resonates, if it resonates. that's why I said if it resonates, <laughs> if it resonates. okay <laughs> so David okay, my homie, what if the person who is bringing drama continually says that I'm attracting it and therefore for not taking responsibility for creating the drama? Great question. Okay, so people who have a little bit of personal development um, will sometimes use the responsibility thing to actually get out of responsibility for themselves, um, which is an interesting game and it's manipulation at its finest because truth is 100% responsibility, 100% responsibility. If I'm not taking 100% responsibility for my life, and he's not, then we're playing a game called I need to win or I need to win. And that's war. <laughs> that's war, offense, defense. And so you've really gotta check in with this particular person and go, is this person committed to actually being responsible in their life? Mm -hmm. And sometimes the answer is gonna be no. Sometimes that's not where they're at on their journey and that's okay. And you lovingly can remove yourself mm -hmm. from that situation. Sometimes a person's like in the middle of their process and they're not nailing it every single time yet, but you see that they're making an effort. Great. You're probably in the same place too. But you really got to get clear. Like one thing that we both know is regardless of what happens in the moment, regardless of how big our egos flare up in the moment, we both know like if I go away, if he goes away, we both know that he's going to take responsibility for it 100%. I'm gonna do the same. It may not happen in the moment, mm -hmm. but it'll happen soon. <laughs> it'll happen soon. And then we'll come back and eventually have that conversation. Okay, two comments. One is uh, Jessica Jess said, what about uh, being in a domestic partnership, AKA not legally married, but committed and two kids and a third on the way. What about it, Jessica? Yeah, I love it. I think that's amazing. I don't think, again, marriage, Marriage is whatever you want marriage to be. I had a story about marriage that like marriage doesn't work and marriage is bullshit and it's part of the institution and blah, blah, blah. And then I met somebody who I could recreate that story with. Mm -hmm. And so it felt good for me, but we have a lot of friends who are in committed partnership for, you know, seven plus, eight plus, 10 plus years. That's all good. Whatever works for you guys. Sam said. Sam, thank you, Sam. Alexi, you're for, amazing. Thank Hi, you for Preston. acknowledging <laughs> what's so apparent here. <laughs> all right. Do we only attract the lessons based on our vibration or do we experience the lessons slash triggers regardless of our vibration? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, this is a very intricate, tricky question. Um, I don't, I mean, neither one of us believes in absolutes. Mm -mm. Um, just for a deeper understanding, triggers are, let's call it ineffective conditioning plus inner wounds mm. plus uh, limiting beliefs. And so this is like a, a cocktail. And when those three things sort of crunch down on each other, then we are triggered. And being triggered means that it's involuntary. You, have you ever noticed that? You get triggered by somebody and you're just like, fuck you! And you're like, where did that come from? I don't know <laughs> oh where God, that came from. This type of person. <laughs> right? So, so lessons slash triggers are not the same thing from our book. Now the lessons are in everything. Everything. At all times. In the door opening or closing, like it's in everything. Yes. Yeah. So what your question is very, it could be construed as complicated because we don't align with the languaging that you use. Um, and it's maybe we just have different understandings of it. Um, and everything from what we have, or I'll just speak for me. There are people who are high vibe people they're vibing high and they still attract fucked up shit. Yeah, but but I, I would contest that because they're vibing high on the surface, but mm -hmm. deep down there's some, some deep rooted fears, some deep rooted wounds. Yes, but I would contest that because, and I think you would agree with me. Life is life. Yes, that we, we, we're labeling certain things as good and bad. Yeah. And in reality, some of the highest vibe people are asking to level up and 
the thing is, is and we triggers come with that. Yes. Whole fucking day. So the thing is, is we think, oh, I want to level up in my relationship, money, career, you name it, right? And and then we go and only send great things <laughs> for that to happen, right? And when bad things happen, I'm gonna sit there and go, why is this happening to me? Yes, but the reality is, is that the universe. Uh, is moving ahead of you a thousand steps ahead of you so when you take one it takes a thousand and it God universe Buddha Allah Krishna uh, source energy understands because it's co-creating with you what you need at the time and all you have to do is look at the last three breakups you've been through mm -hmm. all you have to do is look at the last three jobs that you've had and and see how in the midst of the fire, you went, oh, this is terrible, my life is over, oh, I'm gonna need him forever. And then you look back and you're like, damn, happy that happened, now it's, I've got this tool in my toolbox. Boom, and yeah. this new job, mate, et cetera, et cetera, so. And I will say too, if it triggers you, you needed it. Yes. <laughs> like, if it triggers you, because if you guys ever notice, like, you could be out with a friend, and the same thing happens, you're both watching the same thing happen, and it triggers one person, yep. and it doesn't trigger the other person. Why? Because the one person that it triggered, they needed that trigger to awaken and activate that wound within them and go, hey, check this out. Something's going on inside that you may want to take a look at. Yeah. So if it triggered you, you need it. Thank it. Thank it. Bless it. Look at it. Love on it. And keep it moving. Uh -huh. Boom. Town. How much do you guys learn from the lessons you teach? That's a great question. We're constantly Everything. learning all the time. That's, that's why we can teach them. Oh my gosh. Like even, I mean, even bridge take for example, uh, for example, we're here in Australia doing bridge experience and our extreme leadership. And when did we create that? Four years ago? Mm-hmm. We created about four years ago and three. Uh, three years ago. And every single time we do it, it lands deeper for us because we're in a different space. We've mm -hmm. evolved. We've kind of, we're constantly learning and constant, constantly taking things on and we're seeing deeper connections that we couldn't see before, our consciousness couldn't see before. Mm -hmm. So while it may be the same surface lessons and knowledge, the wisdom's different because the wisdom's what's in the body. So we're showing up to it differently and we're constantly kind of sharpening that tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kendall said, have either of you ended a relationship with a family member because they weren't capable of a real relationship? Yes. Um, and ended is a ended. strong word. Yeah, I don't think I've ever ended one. Um, I have distanced myself from certain family members um, because they couldn't see what I could see. And while I understood that they loved me and they were doing the best they could from where they could with the tools and consciousness they had available, what they had available at the time was not aligning with what I, where I was going and my deep-seated purpose on this planet was being impeded because who you hang around, you become. Mm. And so whether it is blood family, friends, a fucking neighbor, whoever it is, if they are um, stuck, and, and when I say stuck, I mean this is self-proclaimed stuck. Because we all have uncles or fathers or mothers who are like, listen, what you're doing is a cult. What you're doing is bullshit. What you're doing is against Jesus, right? Whatever that is, if they are clear that you are wrong and they are right, then we must separate for now. We will agree to disagree. I love you and I'll love you from afar. Rasta freaking fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just add to that. Um, it is not your job to change anybody. It nope. is not your job to fix anybody that nope. does not want to be changed or fixed. So stop pushing it. Yep. Just show up as love when you are in those interactions. Yep. And if you need to, take some space. Get her. But do it from a place of love. Don't from, do it from a place of like, I'm right, you're an asshole. Yeah. I'm spiritually evolved, you're not. Because um, then that's just as bad as whatever you're claiming they're doing yeah. to you. Um, congrats on the baby. Thank you. Yes. Show them the tummy if you can. Um, well, I've got shorts on, but you kind of can't see it in this. You have to Hold do on. it down a little bit. Hold on. Let me go against the white wall. There yeah. it There's is. There's the nugget. The, the nugget is in there. Little basketball. You got to see it um, when she doesn't have clothes on, but not like. Not for, like that. Though. Not for real, though, because you can't see my boom like that. I mean, you can if you went to the beach, but. Um, I don't necessarily want, or, yeah, we're just not going to be naked today. <laughs> <laughs> not on this live. Uh, How do you heal those wounds and limiting beliefs that trigger us? Um, with love and compassion. Yeah, acknowledgement. First, yeah, first thing you do is 
like first thing you don't do let's talk about what you don't do <laughs> you don't beat yourself up yes. for having the trigger you don't go oh my god i thought i was over this or what the fuck why does this still bother me or i thought i processed this with my psychologist or whatever don't beat yourself up mm -hmm. it's showing up because there's something there for you so mm -hmm. turn the light in ask yourself interesting where did this come from what do i still need to process from this yes. like if it came from your mother or father leaving when you were nine years old, you may need to cry for the nine-year-old. Yes. You may need to actually process and cathart what happened when you were nine years old. And then you get to the bottom, like what story did I make up about myself through that experience? Yep. And what story have I been carrying around with me in this backpack filled with weight into every single relationship in my life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get her done. Zach Wood said, I feel like I rarely meet potential partners who I'm attracted to and who share uh, a majority of my values. This may be a cop out, but I often don't feel like I want to invest in relationships and people who don't share the same values, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, okay, so Zach, even if you believe that someone does, they don't. If, if you look out your window right now, and let's say we were in the same room and we both looked at the tree, we wouldn't see the same tree. Mm -hmm. We'd see our stories about the tree. We'd see our history that, that, that goes with that tree. You may see uh, a time when you were seven years old and you were playing under one. I may see my ancestors hanging from them. And so this idea that you ever truly do know somebody's values and that yours are like, you know, um, concrete. Yeah, they're done. My values and morals stay the same forever is kind of bullshit, my man. And I don't mean that like talking shit to you. I mean that as in like take a deeper look. And and here's the thing: if you if you say you want, if you say you're ready for the one or the two or the three, it's gonna take some practice, my man. Yeah. And so a lot of people think that they can just wait and wait and wait and scroll and wait and not do shit and then meet somebody who is of a particular caliber and actually be ready for a relationship like yeah, that. But you gotta be in the game. Nope. You gotta be in the game. I wanna add to that real quick. Yes. Um, people will tell you their values like this. Yes. Watch how they live. Yeah, exactly. Just, just watch how they Get live. Get them, baby. Just they'll be like, I value growth and contribution and then they sit on the fucking TV all day yes. and talk about how they don't have enough, enough money or enough time to make a difference. Yes. So watch their life. You will get their values quick. Get them. We gotta go. Naomi's here. We gotta go. Hi, Naomi. Okay. All right. We're about to get massages from our home girl. Uh-huh. Um, boom. Cam Adair, we're going to see you soon. Rastafari. Rastafari. We love you guys. We love you all. Um, truly. Have you and Alexi ever had a conflicting value that made you think your relationship wouldn't work? Yes. Yes, we have. And how did you get past it? We talked about it. And we recognized that we both actually valued the same things. It's just... We looked at it look, differently. looked at it differently. He looked at it from perspective Preston. I looked at it from perspective Alexi. And we figured out that if we just shifted our perspective a little bit, we could understand all sides. Uh-huh. Okay, that's it. Yes. We're going. Let, let me just say this. Oh. Um, and... And a lot of times our values are based on wounds. They're based on, uh, you know, if, let's say your father or mother was an alcoholic and so you have this value called you can never drink or you can never eat gluten or some stupid thing, not stupid, but something like that. And you call that a value, right? You say, I have a value that you never put poison in your body. And this is interesting because it's coming from a wound and so if you take a deeper look then you may see we saw i saw that some of what was conflicting with her was based on a wound not wanting to be controlled right which is an old story that came from me and didn't have shit to do with her and hers she can talk about on another live or whatever the case may be, but that was from a wound. And so when I got to take a deeper look at it, then I got to let it go and rework it from a place that was integrated and fun. Yeah, and one of my deep values was, is still integrity, but I, I had it laced with my wound. Mm. Like everything has to be on point. Like you can never be out of integrity with your word or this and that. It was like maniacal. It was yes. crazy. So anytime I felt like anything was slightly off in integrity, my wound got activated, my wound got triggered, and yes. it was like, oh, I can't trust you. Uh. Right? So it was really the wound of don't trust, can't trust, Miss Independent over here, I don't need anybody, I'm going to run. And that came up a lot for us. And then what I realized was I got to, entrust the in, I got to trust the integrity of my partner 
to be 100% committed to his 100% responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that's what I trust. So I had to shift my understanding of integrity as well. Mm. Now, yeah. we're, we're gonna go, but now before we do, go. the moment we get off of this, please click the share button and write something that resonated with you in this video. You can just write how awesome I am yes. and how he's okay. Mainly <laughs> that I'm sexy and that I am a chocolate drop. Even with green shit in his teeth. I know, you gotta let me have that green stuff Nobody in my teeth. Nobody saw it though. Nobody said, none of y'all, none of y'all. Y'all ain't no good friends, man. It wasn't us, it was you. No, I was. I'm reflecting <laughs> or, or, or projecting. It. There okay. it goes. See? See what's happening? Here? Okay, I love you guys. Bye. <laughs>